Sergeant Jason Keeler, now Supply Officer on the USS John C. Stennis in charge of aviation logistics. And it's my job to make sure that the aircraft have the parts they need to keep in the air. Let's say we're uh, on deployment on station and we're supporting a mission and this mission that the aircraft is flying has a problem, lands on the flight deck, they will call my office and let me know that they need a part, for example, a flight control computer, and I'll rush it up to the flight deck so we can get it installed in the aircraft and get it back in the air. We could have that computer on the flight deck in 10 minutes, plane back in the air within 30 minutes. I'm in charge of uh, $78 million, uh, basically three different type of budgets, uh, aviation maintenance, which controls all the aviation parts for airplanes and anything they need uh, for the squadrons. Uh, one part on there can cost you at least a half a million dollars. We also in charge of what we call supply and equipment, that's just regular stuff for the ship. That can be anything from toilet paper to paper cups to parts for the radar, uh, parts for the, the reactor plants, uh, parts for engineering, AC, heat, and also parts for the galley. I'm Lieutenant Junior Grade Chris Johnson. I'm the Wardroom Officer on board USS John C. Stennis. My name is Lieutenant J.G. Paul Doyle. I'm the Stateroom Officer on board the USS John C. Stennis. Uh, Paul and I work on board together to share an office, and uh, really our job is to make sure the quality of life uh, remains high for the officers on board. The division that Chris and I are in is about 65 people in it, and it's split up where we have about half on each side. And to be honest with you, you kind of forget how many people are working for you until you start talking to people in the civilian world who are out there. They have maybe four people working for them that are our age. I don't think there's anywhere else in the world that I could have gone or any place I could have gone out of college and managed that many people and been responsible not only for uh, getting the work done or the day-to-day -day activities, but also for their lives. The experiences that we've had while we've been on board you really can't get anywhere else. I mean, not at this age and not at this level. I'm uh, Lieutenant Commander Jim Liberco. I'm an Assistant Supply Officer on board uh, John C. Stennis. As a Supply Officer, you are in charge of everything that comes on board this ship. Uh, there is nothing that comes on board this ship or leaves the ship that doesn't go through the supply department. Tires, food, you name it, anything that's a service, uh, hotel services or parts, we do it. You work with the uh, submarines, you work with surface ships, uh, you work with the aviators. Whatever fits in with your personality or what kind of job you like. In the supply corps, you can do it all. And it's up to you to decide what you like and where you want to go with it. I'm Lieutenant Paul Ravenall. I'm a Navy Supply Corps officer. I work for ComNav AirPack. I'm in charge of six Pacific Fleet carriers. My first job in the Navy was actually on an aircraft carrier. It was as a wardroom officer, and as a wardroom officer, I had about 100 people working for me. I was only 22 years old, and that was kind of amazing. I talked to some friends that had just graduated with me. They worked for corporations, and they had nobody working for them. That's the Navy. They, they get you on track with leadership and management, and if you want leadership, that's where to get the Navy especially the Supply Corps. The Navy's uh, great for all kinds of experiences. Uh, it helps you to, to make yourself marketable on the outside. Uh, it helps you grow as a person on the inside. Um, for uh, making yourself marketable on the outside, you're managing the three big M's that any corporation is looking for, manpower, material, and money. One of the interesting things I'm working on right now is called the Navy Cash System. It's a cashless system that we're going to use on board the aircraft carriers. We use cash and coin like everybody else, and we want to go away with that. We use over $250,000 worth of quarters. That's labor intensive, not to just physically carry it off the ship, but to count it and to keep track of it. And we want to go with modern technology, the cutting edge of technology. We want to use the debit card, the magnetic stripe, the silicon chip. In my Navy cash discussions and meetings, we were trying to formulate the implementation plan, and we had senior executives from J.P. Morgan Chase, Department of Treasury. I felt really flattered that the Navy would trust me to deal with these executives at my age. Um, it was really impressive. Lieutenant Heidi Farron, Supply Officer, SEAL Team 1. Basically, I'm responsible for procurement, financials, and gear for the SEALs at SEAL Team 1. As soon as I graduated from the Naval Academy, I went to Supply Corps School, got six months of education, and then I reported to the Stennis, and I had a division of 54 people working for me. I had an inventory of $1.2 million, two ship stores, a laundry, two barber shops. Uh, just a phenomenal responsibility. I am Lieutenant J.G. Regina Dixon. I am Supply Officer, and I am Officer in Charge of Priority Material Office Detachment in San Diego, California. I expedite uh, cash reps. Those are when a ship has an urgent need for material 
let's say something breaks in their engine room and they need to part, then uh, they will submit a requisition to us. We make sure that they get it shipped to them within a certain amount of time so they can be off and running. When it comes to my job, I, you know, step up to the plate and do what needs to be done. And it's kind of cool when you look back and see what you've done. It, you're impressed at yourself sometimes. If you're chosen to go to the Supply Corps, you're going to be sent to the Navy Supply Corps School, which is located in Athens, Georgia. And uh, it's one of the Navy's best kept secrets. If you've ever been to the campus there, it's, it's just an amazing environment to, to go to school in. Um, it's ex exclusive. Only Supply Corps officers go there. And it's one of the things that I think builds the bond between Supply Corps officers is that Athens is what ties people together. At Athens, you'll learn retail operations, postal operations, payroll management, finance, and leadership. When you first go to Athens, you know, you're, you have no idea what's going on. The instructor's there, they just take you underneath their wings. Even the senior enlisted, they just show you how it is in the fleet, and they give you so much confidence. So when you go on, on board your first ship, you know exactly what to expect because they've told you how, you know, see stories about this happened to me and that happened to me. It's like listening to your dad. You don't really want to hear the story, but you need it. And so it's good that they are able to share that kind of stuff with you and get you prepared to go out the door. big advantage to supply is the lot of grad school to you. Supply Corps will actually send you to grad school, top 20 business school in the country, and that's actually one of your tours. And you can't beat that. They'll pay for it, and that's your job to go to school for a year and a half. I uh, joined the Navy right out of college. Uh, I did a, uh, a tour at sea, and the uh, Navy kept treating me right, so I ended up uh, having the Navy pay for uh, my master's degree. Uh, so it kept me staying around a little longer, and now I'm, uh, now I'm on the John C. Stennis. And you can go to school even after you join the Navy. The Navy will support your education. You can get a business degree, which will help you out with the supply corps. I've gained the business skills. I've gained management skills. Um, I've had tremendous responsibility. Not many people at the age of 27 can say I had eight million dollars I was responsible for as a dispersing officer, 5,000 payrolls. Um, it's just a whole lot of experience. Uh, I'm in my mid-20s. I've lived in five cities in this country, from Atlanta, Chicago, San Diego, and down in Florida. Most of my friends, they haven't left the New England area. And with this upcoming Westpac, I'm going to get to travel and see the world. So that's probably the biggest opportunity that we have and the best thing going about being in the Navy. One of the great things about being a supply officer is that you're not stuck in one community. You can transfer from the aviation side, submarines, the surface world, and you can be stationed in any part of the world, any exotic location from Australia to England. Since I've been in the Navy, um, I've been on all seven continents. Um, and I wouldn't have ever done that had I not joined the Navy. I had the chance to purchase a motorcycle. Uh, overseas, they have a great deal with military where you can purchase any American-made automobile uh, or motorcycle at a really good price. So I get to go out on Saturdays and Sundays and cruise around. Uh, sometimes my girlfriend rides with me. Sometimes she laughs at me. Sometimes she scolds me for riding. Look at the Navy Supply Corps. Um, if you want to travel, if you want to work with technology, you want to work with money, take advantage of your business degree, or, or even get some leadership skills as a stepping stone to big, bigger executive positions, that's the way to get it. When I interact with my civilian friends, we, uh, they listen to my stories. They're not telling me what their day was like. They want to know what it's like to be on a carrier, what it's like to see an F-14 land or do cats and traps. Uh, I am definitely having a lot more fun at my job than they are. Within the supply community on board, there's really a lot of support. You'll find it's a team effort anywhere. We don't benefit from anyone's failure. The Navy really wants you to succeed, and they'll give you the opportunity to do so. It's more of a close-knit community. There's not that many supply corps officers, so it's more like a family. For example, we have supply corps luncheons once, like a quarter, and we meet and just socialize and hang out, and there's always like a social hour before, and people actually go. It's fun. And just being in San Diego, every time I see somebody run into them, it's just like so many memories flood back, and we have just a good time. I absolutely love the Navy. It's a great family. It's a great experience, and uh, I think honor, courage, and commitment are three of the most important values that any individual can have. I love the Navy. The Navy has done well for me, and I am going to make the Navy career. Absolutely, I'm making the Navy a career.